Today is the 29th of October. It's raining outside. It's flooding outside. Everybody is inside, and it's a perfect day to do some filming, but I'd like to thank Mr. Brent Lewis. Brent, thank you for coming on these outrageous conditions, all right? Thanks for having now, me. Now, everyone knows you've done so many nice things in the community. You organize events that I've been to, but we're going to focus on one thing today. You've got a new book coming out. I do. And having read one of your authored books, I know I can't... I, so I'm going to be quiet. I mean, I'll ask questions, of course. Of i got to interrupt you because I'm late. <laughs> but tell me about the six... I, we were just talking before when you went out to get some water. Stardust by the Bushel, Great Eastern Shore title. Thank okay, you. By the Bushel. And the, but anyway, I'll be quiet. Tell me about this thing. And welcome, and thank you for coming. Uh, hey, man, thanks for uh, having me. You know, it's been a weird couple of years, oh, so yes, it's happens. nice to be around. We haven't seen each other. <laughs> we haven't person. seen each other. We, we have it. Uh, so I worked on the book, you know, all during COVID. Okay. Um, I had originally started it in the winter of 2019, like okay. the November, December 2019. Right. Okay. And uh, had my game plan all laid out as to how I was going to do it. And then March 2020 came along and kind of upset the apple cart. So I adjusted my approach to the book. Right. Uh, but it was always about movie making on the Eastern Shore, about movie stars that have come from here or who have lived actually, here. I've always, want, I asked this, we had a couple actors on here a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. So what comes first, the idea, and then that gets transferred to a computer or paper, or did you write and go and then, before you get into particulars? You know, um, I originally wrote on the topic about 10 years ago for a magazine article. Oh, okay. And I've always been a pop culture and history guy. I love history, but I also am very much into pop culture. I love movies and comic books and TV okay. and comedy and all My that kind of stuff. stuff. All that yeah. kind of stuff, okay. I love it. So. Um, the last book I wrote was a self-published uh, fiction, a novel, right, right. and I didn't want to relearn self-publishing. It seems like every two or three years that process changes, okay. and I didn't want to go through that again, so I approached Ron Salter of Secant Publishing okay. here on the Eastern Shore to pitch some ideas, and we originally started out with icons of the Eastern Shore, realized that was too big in scope, and now, so, icons mean what? Uh, movie okay. stars, politicians, oh, okay. athletes, like all those, every everybody okay. from the Eastern Shore. Oh, but okay. but we realized, oh, that's that's a lot. Okay. So we narrowed it down to film, which is one of my favorite topics. Okay. Okay. And so you know, again, I wrote about uh, movies made on the shore, uh, people from the shore who have been involved in movie making people from the shore who have had movies made about them, and then some behind the scenes stuff, like uh, James M. Cain. Well, tell me, yeah, without giving the book yep. away, but first of all, let's do this, let's be, give it, we're, we're teasing people. Sure. Now. When is the book coming out? We're we still a couple days away. Uh, we're, we're probably we're looking at the middle of November. Okay. I'm having a big launch party at right. Cult Classic Brewery on Thursday, December second, okay. from six to eight p.m. Right. So we know the book will out be out where, by then. Where, where is that brewery? Just in case. Someone on can. Ken Island. Okay. Uh, on Ken Island, uh, Cult Classic Brewery, December second. 6 to 8 p.m. Walk in or rip? walk in. No, we're going to just kind of celebrate the publication of the and book. Book signing, that type book of signing, that okay. kind of thing. Okay. Uh, okay. Specialty drinks, so specialty beers. December, but okay, now let's go back because you've already, see, I'm, I'm ready now. Okay. Yeah, you're ready. Yeah. Tell me, throw a little stardust at me. Right. Who are some of the folks? Who are some of the movies? What do we got? So, uh, the. First film made on the Easter Shore was filmed in January 1917 in 1917. Queenstown. My grandfather was 17 years old. Okay. Silent movie, obviously. Okay. Uh, but it was only a portion of the film called The Whip. Okay. And it's a melodrama about horse racing. Really? And it was a Broadway play, uh, actually a, a play in London first and a play on, Bro in, on Broadway. And the producer, uh, William A. Brady, wanted to make a film from the play. In the play, there's a big train crash. So what he did was bought some rolling stock, some obsolete rolling stock, a locomotive and some cars. He found a uh, length of track between Centerville and Queenstown. In that, 1970. In 1917, and he staged this giant train crash. 
Okay. In an afternoon. Are you kidding me? And then they got back on the train and went back to New York. Not that train, but okay. they got back on a Wait, train. Did anyone know the Eastern Shore existed in 1917 besides John Smith? <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't know that they How did. How did they pick this one? I think he probably, you know, this guy was quite a character. Okay. Um, he not only was a uh, movie and uh play producer, but he was also a boxing promoter. So he represented uh, Gentleman Jim Corbett. Of course. And he had connections all over the country. So I imagine... He was an entrepreneur. Of he was an entrepreneur. You know, he lost and won fortunes uh, and was just this crazy, typical show business okay. character. Okay, so 1917... Queenstown. Queenstown, Centerville, we had a first... The whip. the whip. And it's only a section of the film, and you can find it on YouTube. Oh, it's still part you can of find it. You know, a lot of those movies from that era are lost yes, uh, because of they, they burned up, yeah. they, you know, disregard. And so the whip, though, there are portions of that film still available. Now, the whip, I'm assuming whipping on the whip. The whip was the, the name of the horse. Okay, so and they did a train crash. And they, here they, in they staged a train crash. And okay. what happened after 1917? It was a big pause. Uh, uh, actually, then Talbot County kind of comes into play. Okay. There was another movie uh, made in late 1917 in Easton. We're talking about pandemic 1917. Yeah. Come on, uh, you know, World War One. Yes. Um, and so I think that this place has always drawn creative people. It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. So in 1928, they made The First Kiss in St. Michael's okay. with Gary Cooper and Gary. Faye Ray. Gary Cooper and Faye Ray were, were in St. Michael's. Michael's. Oh, Lord. And the director of that film said that Hollywood, even by that time, had learned to fake everything everywhere, but could not <laughs> fake the Chesapeake Bay. That's right. So he, the the world, and so he was very adamant that to film this movie about a waterman turned pirate. Okay. They had to do it. They the had to do it on the Eastern well, Shore. Okay. So then 28, and then there was a long gap in between, and then, of course, the 80s and the 90s come on with movies like Runaway Bride in Berlin and Wedding Crashers now, who, in you, Talbot you, County. Okay, talk about those. I mean, just... Scenes were filmed here, or the whole entire uh, film? A lot of Runaway Bride was filmed in Berlin. Any big stars? Or? Julia Roberts and Richard Gere. We're here. It was the follow up to Pretty Woman. Oh, wow. And uh, Gary Marshall, the director of, of Pretty Woman, also okay. directed Runaway Bride. Okay. They were only in Berlin for a few days shooting, but the prep work for shooting Probably took weeks. weeks. Or months, yes. uh, they they turned Berlin into the fictional town of Hale. The actual town of Berlin. They took which the we town. now bypass, unfortunately, when we go to the Actually, region, I right? think it's kind of come back. There's well, a, there's back. quite a lot going on in okay. Berlin now. And, and someone scouted Berlin mm -hmm. because it's probably fairly inexpensive to do, and it gave them that small town atmosphere. Gary Marshall very much wanted that small town atmosphere. Now, did they stay here, or were they staying in that? How it was funny, you know, at the time that, say, Runaway Bride was made, mm -hmm. they, uh, Julia Roberts stayed in a uh, undisclosed hotel location. On the shore. On the shore. Oh, wow. Richard Gere had a private home that he stayed in. Okay. Um, Gary Marshall was the face of the project. He was very engaged with the community. He did a meet and greet and a book signing. Okay. Uh, Julia Roberts supposedly spent a lot of time in town Good for her. Uh, engaging with people. With people. With, uh, Richard Gere was a little more standoffish, but a professional and a nice by all accounts, though he might have said that he didn't like being in such a place with nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> He's so a there, chicken was, nugget. Yeah, there was some there was some things said yeah, about him, I think, that were not so great. But everybody now looking back uh it was a is, great experience. A great experience. In fact, Berlin is still uh two years ago I think they had the twentieth anniversary and they were giving sold out walking tours of all the locations in Berlin the that film. the film made. And they still locate I mean there's scenes at a certain house. Yeah, there hotel. was a house, there was a private home that they used for Julia Roberts family home and they put the homeowners up in a condo in Ocean City for a couple weeks okay. and they redid the interior a little bit and shot scenes in there. Well, let me ask you two questions. One how did you, first of all, how did you, did you go to 
primary source? How did you know 1917 things were going on? How, uh, oh, man, the research, so because of COVID, the research changed. Yeah. I planned on visiting all these places so nice. and going to sites. Yeah. That Couldn't changed. That be. So, you know, having internet resources, it was a challenge in some ways, but other ways I think it worked out for me. Okay. There were people available to speak to on the phone okay. and, and emails email, yes. that might have been too busy otherwise. Uh, so they were stuck at home. They, they were stuck at home like I was. Yeah. Uh, Carol Fleischer is a locations manager out of D.C. So She's her job is to find to locations, find locations to, film, right? to film. She's uh, very well versed in, in the Virginia, Maryland, D.C. region. Oh, wow. She's done scores of films, everything from uh, Philomena, Oscar-winning Oscar films, okay. to Sharknado on sci-fi. Her last big film was Wonder Woman 84. And so she does really big films. She was the location director for Wedding Crashers okay. with Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson. This is, this is a talent. A whole part of movies that most of us don't. Most think would, about. yeah, and yeah. she's she was so interesting, nice and, person, and super fun, super I bet cool she's to talk had to. Some interesting people. She has a lot of cool stories. She's okay. very colorful and okay. and has this super outgoing personality. I don't know that I would have been able to talk to her if COVID hadn't happened okay. because she's a busy person, but so because she, she was time. home, she was available. That's amazing. The other people that I spoke to, you know, if if, if there were, I wasn't surprised at the people who didn't speak to me right. like linda hamilton was born in salisbury linda uh hamilton. linda hamilton from Sol terminator yeah. fame oh, uh, i reached out to her with no luck uh, there were a couple others not they're busy people busy and people they in the middle of the world traveling yeah, yeah and her management kind of said she doesn't have a lot of connections to the shore anymore so I, I kept getting close, but that didn't surprise me. What surprised me were the people who did, did talk to me. Yeah. So I spent a day interviewing Billy Bankhead, who is Tallulah Bankhead's nephew. Oh, wow. And he still lives in Kent County. He's a very private person. He typically doesn't like to talk a lot about the subject. He talked about to. He Man. talked about his aunt, his mom, who was obviously Tallulah's sister, yeah. Eugenia. One of the uh, biggest names in the uh, She was scandalous, biggest. Tallulah. Oh, yeah, she was scandalous. Scan oh, she had such a... Um, and he'd tell you the good stories. He told me good stories. <laughs> okay. He was also very forthcoming, okay. which was interesting. Uh, another person that I spent a lot of time talking to on the phone was Patrine Mitchum, yeah, who, Robert Mitchum's Robert daughter. Mitchum. Now, where does she live? She's in L.A., course, they, you know, but she, uh, Robert Mitchum and his family lived in Trap for right. about a decade. And in Centerville, you tell me, I don't know if this is true or not, he used to go down to <clears> Doc's <throat> restaurant was, I think it was called Milton's Inn, and get him fights every Friday night. I don't know if that's true. I'm, I'm, I, you know, there were Mitchum bar sightings <laughs> from Penn Island to Dover. <laughs> and, he didn't and, discriminate. No, and once I put it out there, because I've written about Mitchum a couple times okay. for my blog, or and, and I always reach out, and, and there are people who had interactions with him okay. all over the shore. Uh, but Patrine was the youngest of three children of of Robert and now, Dorothy Mitchell. Was she my age now, 70s? Or yeah, probably around okay. that range. Okay. She was eight when they moved to the shore, okay. spent about a decade here. They were they had a horse farm in Trap. Right. And uh, so Patrine was very forthcoming. She was also source checking important for me because sometimes with particularly writing about these kind of topics, you don't know sometimes how to separate fact from legend. As everybody has stories. I mean, even in Senate, when we first moved here 45 years ago, everybody had stories about running in Mitchum. And you say, wait a minute, he was six years old. They, didn't, <laughs> they wouldn't let you in the middle town in. Right. But, but even Hollywood in general, just the way that the mythology is sure. built. And so it's often hard to decide. So Patrine was very helpful in reading her the chapter I wrote about her parents okay. because she source checked for me. What did Mrs. Just what did Mrs. Mitchum do? She was originally from Delaware. That's where they met. Oh, Felton that's Delaware. So that's what his his maternal grandparents lived in Delaware. Okay. Okay. He had a rough start early childhood and spent time here. She Dorothy 
uh, who would end up being his wife, was the popular kid in school, oh, the okay. homecoming queen type. Oh, very and exactly, Mitchum very was a hobo. <laughs> and literally a, a teenage hobo. Okay. Uh, hopping trains. He yeah. did a few weeks on a chain gang in Savannah. Well, he was arrested for marijuana. He so was. Okay. He said, you know, and, and that was scandalous at the time, yeah. but it helped his career. It okay. didn't hurt his career. A tough guy image. Tough guy image. He was a man's man, but also a woman's man. Okay. And so people kind of saw that episode in his life part as of, part of who mystique. he was, mystique. part of his mystique. And it was funny because he, like Tallulah, he was good for quotes. Well, and so, was, okay. Yeah, soon after that, he was in an interview and they asked him about, did it hurt his career? And he said, no, I went right back to work. <laughs> the only bad thing was I had to quit the Boy Scouts. <laughs> so There's a great picture of him in a white t-shirt with his sleeves rolled up in the back of a paddy wagon. <laughs> yeah. And you just say, that's Robert Mitchum. <laughs> that's Mitchum. You know, he was, he was that uh, an icon of post-war yeah. skepticism yeah. and, uh, you know, just kind of world weariness. Yeah. And so Patrine was, was great. I really, the person I spoke to the most was actually Linda Harrison. Amen. Linda Harrison is from Berlin. Her family was from Harrison Farms. They at one time had the biggest seed catalog in the world. They were the biggest importer of peaches. A blight wiped them out in the 60s. But Linda was a grandchild of the Harrisons that started the company. As a young girl, she was a beauty contestant, a pageantry right, kind of right. thing. At an early age, she decided she wanted to be an actress. She won some beauty pageants, ends up in LA, gets picked up a by very attractive woman. Very, very attractive woman. young lady. She's 21 or 22 Probably at the smart time. Smart as a whip. I mean, smart as good a whip. actors and actresses are smart people. Well, and she was, she kind of knew what she wanted and, and figured out a way to do it. Okay. She lands in LA. She um, ended up playing the primitive woman in the very first Planet of the Apes against Charlton Heston. Oh, so name. Nova, her, okay. her character's name is Nova. There's that famous scene at the end of the original Planet of the Apes where the Statue of Liberty. That's her on the back of the that's horse. That's her on the back of the oh, horse. Yeah. So Linda, that's I didn't even... That's a great scene. He goes around the corner. classic. You see the arm half buried. Or the, oh, wow. And, and so that, that's Linda. And she okay. was, uh, you know, she went on to... Uh, do a couple more things. She she was in a TV show called Brackets World. It was a short lived. She was at Airport seventy seven. Some amazing role. I mean, small. Yeah, interview. small roles. But after she got to L.A., she met Richard Zanuck, who was Daryl F. Zanuck's son. Okay. Daryl F. was one that. of the last moguls of Hollywood. Richard was his son. He was the uh, head of, century, of 20th Century Fox for a while, okay. then became an independent producer of films like Jaws and Driving Miss Daisy. So Linda was married to him. She wasn't Pick working right actress, but right she, was, she saw all the backstage okay. stuff. Okay. So when I first found out Linda was from Berlin, which I didn't know, um, I stopped at the Taylor House Museum in Berlin, was informed of that. The docent there was able to get me a phone number. Oh, so I reached out to Linda, and it was a little bit of a rocky start because she was she didn't know who I was. Yeah. I was who's reaching out. Like who's this guy? Yeah, yeah. But we really, I bet I, I've probably spoken to her on the phone a couple dozen times now. A dozen times. We've become we've become really friendly. Well, uh, congratulations. Uh, my wife Peggy it. calls her my girlfriend. Oh, is that your girlfriend? <laughs> Peggy, he's safe. <laughs> Linda's not around. He's safe. That's right. Yeah, but, but she was really cool. Okay. Brad, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna take off my microphone. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna run down the bookstore and put it in a, I mean come on, this is too good. Let me just ask you we only got a couple minutes. Sure. Left. Because let's not give it all away. We want right. them to buy the book. And and they can pre-order from ccant.com. Well, let's, let's do that now. Okay. If we want to pre-order, start us. By the, I'm going to go home and do it now because you know what? You're talking Mitchum. You're talking the woman on the back of a horse. Or just also, we're talking about things like uh, Misty of Chincoteague. Okay. We're talking about Harriet Tubman. We're talking about Annie Oakley, who lived in Cambridge, lived in Cambridge. for a few They're years. Still the Annie Oakley house. I had a lot of films made about her over the years. Okay. Uh, we're talking about uh, Edna Ferber and the James Adams Floating Theater, because she based Showboat on that. We're talking about James M. Kane, who wrote Double Indemnity and The Postman Always Rings Twice. Of each of these folks? Chapter of each of these folks. Okay, how long is the book? 
It's, <laughs> it's, it's, um, so it's, it's probably going to be around 300 pages. pages. Oh, that's nothing. A hundred, probably, we're probably around 100,000 words. It started at 40,000. Fred, your tease? Wait you've got everybody <laughs> watching this program. The names you've dropped so far. Let me just ask you this. Yeah, man. Let's talk about the pre-order. If I'm right now watching this show and say, look, i got to get this book. I'm like, Fred, I want to know about these people. Let's go. How can we do that? The easiest way. The easiest way is secant.com. That's my C-Cant, publisher. Secant with an S E S E C A N T. Okay. The it's a algebraic term. Okay. The okay. shortest line between two points oh. on a curve. I See, don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm not a math guy. But you can order that right. Pre-order. You can order it for secant.com. Just go to their website, pre-order it. There's a way to note whether you want it signed or not. Oh wow. And so you will sign it. I'll pre-order. sign it. We'll ship Perfect. it out. The uh, we're looking at the 11th or 15th of November, sometime around that area of uh, time to have the book in our hands. Okay. And, so and we start going at the people. And yes, and now, then of course we're doing the sign. The, okay, let's go over the sign again. When, where, and how? When? Friday. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Then. Thursday. Okay. December 2nd. Okay. To December on a Thursday, so not going to interfere with the Centerville Parade. None or of, that of that stuff. stuff. Where is it? Six to eight p.m. at Cult Classic Brewery on Ken Island. And you can walk in. You don't have to walk buy in. a ticket or anything. Nope. We'll be set up. We'll be selling books. Uh, the Cult Classic will have drink specials and food oh, specials, and it'll be a little party. Okay. Let me just ask you. We only have a minute to. Of all, I don't don't give any secrets of the book, but. Of, who was your, I mean, maybe Linda Harrison, I never talked to your wife ever. <laughs> is there one person out of the book you say, you know what, we'll take Linda out because you've talked to her. Okay. Is there one person that you would say, you know what, I want a beer and a steak with that person, male or female? Oh, you know, they're both. Probably too many. They're, 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 I'd say Mitchum and okay. Tallulah. Oh, okay. Obviously both are gone, long gone. Sure. Sure. But, you know, they were characters. And really, uh, I can see them being... Uh, Tallulah didn't spend a lot of time here on the shore. Her sister lived here, but in her later life, she would come visit. Her nephew told me a story that, you know, his aunt was uh, uh, a... So a uh, showbiz person, okay. so it was not very modest. So they would go <laughs> skinny dipping now. out at the pool. And yeah. there was a local plumber one day who was doing some work out at the farm, and everybody was naked out at the pool. And for the first few hours, I guess he didn't look. But eventually he said, well, if they're not afraid to walk around like that, no I'm way. not afraid no to way. look. Okay. So Tallulah and, and Mitchum. Now, stories like that in the book? Yes. Oh, good. All right. Well, look at folks, with the holidays coming up, this is perfect timing. By the good ever who's running the show, perfect timing for the holidays. Thanks, man. If you want to support a local author, and I'm going to tell you what, the topics sound great. I mean, I, I'm a film guy. I just saw The Dune. I can't wait oh, to see cool. the new James Bond. I know you guys are, are, are your family. You're all we film bosses. Like but if you have a chance, perfect, perfect Eastern Shore Christmas gift or anywhere, start us by the bushel, okay, by Brent Lewis. I mean, we're going to hit, we're going to learn about people who made the short interesting from 19, I'm still going out in circles. <laughs> 1970, my grandfather was 17. We had a pandemic. We had a world war going on. And I, we had ferry boats running, yep. maybe, if they weren't you know, being used for military purposes. Right. It's pretty amazing they were on the shore. Well, Brent, you've opened up a Pandora's box for our movie people. A lot of success with the book. Thanks. And again, let's do one more time. If I want to pre-order the book today. If you want to pre-order the book today, go to secant.com, S-E-C-A-N-T.com, okay. Secant Publishing, I should say, and um, you can pre-order, we can sign it, and we're going to throw in an e-book for everybody who oh, pre-orders, okay. and you get, uh, a you free get an copy. copy. They, you can get an autographed copy that way. And again, if they want to meet you in person, they can go right down to Ken Island. Where, what brewery are we going to be at? The Ken Cult Island? Classic Brewery, December okay. 2nd, Thursday from 6 to 8. Be you and we'll there. be doing other signings. There'll be drinks there. There'll be, uh, it'll be fun. It'll, oh, be it'll, be a, fun. it'll be a party. I went to one of your book signings. It was a delight. Oh, thank and you. And I, I met everybody in Queen Anne's County that I'd like to meet. Okay? Uh, well, Which is I, everybody. I, I 
always appreciate your support. I mean, you guys here at QAC TV and and you in particular have always been a big supporter of mine, and I really appreciate Look, it. Best of success with the book. Thanks, man. That's hope. It's I don't I get to see you before the next twenty four months, which we're going to have that. <laughs> okay. Best of luck again. Stardust by the bushel. It wanted to show some secrets of some of the things that went on the shore in regard to movies. It's, oh, I can't wait to get it. And it's only 300 pages. Come on, I read that in a week. Lots of pictures, too. Oh, a lot of pictures, lot of too. photographs. What's a lot the of best cool picture pictures. in the book, if you picked one? No, I have not. Okay, okay. Uh, there's I'll, a lot of cool ones. I'm going to ask you to sign in. What's the best okay. one? Okay. <laughs> I'm Fred McNeil. Thank you for watching Conversations with Fred. We've probably teased you a little bit on a great book. Please buy it, okay? My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time, hopefully, at the book signing.